Hi, welcome back to this video series on mechanics of forecasting methods. I am Piyush. The series had uh, five videos or five series on moving averages, exponential smoothing, trend lines, seasonal indices, and this last one on measures of forecasting accuracy. There also have been support videos on how to use each of these methods better. Forecasting accuracy, the three basic purposes of why we measure. One, to check the performance of how we are doing. Second, to recalibrate. So, for example, if we have selected certain methods, uh, certain values of alpha or gammas or seasonal indices, we need to check if those, method, those values are relevant. And three, if we are selecting a forecasting method, we would want to compare across various forecasting methods, which does a good job. So, sometimes to compare, we use measures of accuracy. In this video, we will only see four specific methods, a bias, mean absolute deviation or MAD, mean absolute percentage error or MAPE, and tracking signal. There are many other methods, but we limit ourselves to these four. Now the data set, we have 12 periods of data, the actual demand and the forecast. The first is the error, which is the easiest. Now the error is nothing but the actual minus the forecast. Uh, having selected this, I just drag it. So these are the errors of each and every period. And the summation of these errors, sorry, the average of these errors is what we call as bias. Bias is the average of these errors. So I say equal to, uh, I beg your pardon, equal to average of all these numbers here. That close enter gives me bias. So in this case, our bias is very close to zero, a negative 0 0.167. The running sum of forecast errors, RSFE, the running sum, is the continuous summation of the errors. So since we are starting here, this would be equal to minus 2. For the next period, it is minus 2 plus 8. And the next period would be 6 plus 7. So I can drag it to get the running sum. So for the running sum for the third pe uh, period would be 6 plus 7, 13. For the fourth period it would be 13 plus negative 9 which would make it 4 and so on. So these are the running sum of forecasting errors. Ideally the running sum should be close to 0. Uh, the absolute errors. Uh, absolute errors are the positive values of errors. So we can calculate it very easily by saying it's equal to ABS, bracket open, and the error term. So we enter, that's the absolute error, we drag the formula. The advantage of absolute error is sometimes very high positive and very high negative errors might cancel each other to give a very low bias. But there's still errors. So the negative value, effect of the negative value is taken away here. And the mean absolute deviation is the average of these absolute errors. So this equals to average of all these values of absolute errors to give us a absolute error of 6.166. So this is the MAD or the mean absolute deviation. The percentage error is the MAD okay, divided by the actual. That's what the percentage error. Now percentage error becomes very important because an error of say a 1 unit on a forecast of 100 unit is a 1% error. But an error of 1 unit on 10 units is a 10% error. So error cannot be absolute. It has to be a percentage. And that's why we use this percentage error. I sum up or I drag the formula to get the percentage errors. So 0 0.015 or 1.5% uh, in the first period, 5.6% in the second period. The average of all these percentage errors is the MAP or the mean absolute percentage error. So equal to average of all these numbers here to give me the mean absolute percentage error. So MAP is the average of the percentage errors. Uh, let me write those num th things again so we know what we're talking about. The bias is the average of the errors. The MAD or the mean absolute deviation is the average of absolute errors. And the MAP or the mean absolute percentage errors is the average of the percentage errors. Now tracking signal is the last. Now to find tracking signal, we first need to find the cumulative absolute errors. So here it would be 2. Uh, in the next period it equal 2 plus 
8, so it's 10 and so on. Next will be 10 plus 7, 17. Let's drag the formula to make it easier for us. Now, uh, the running sum or the bias, the MAD are calculated at the end of every of a given period. Tracking signal exists for each and every period. So the tracking signal, the formula is the running sum of forecast errors, which is the column E, divided by MAD up till that point. So here it would be the running sum of forecast errors, which is this, divided by MAD. So MAD would be the cumulative absolute error divided by the period. So it's 1. We'll use the serial number here to help us make the formula easier and drag. So it's minus 1 because it's minus 2 divided by um, 2. 2 divided by 1 is the MAD at this point. And I can drag the formula here to get a tracking signal at various points. So some firms set up quality control policies that tracking signal should not go above a certain value. Wonderful. So what we have learnt is four basic simple methods of measuring forecasting accuracy. The bias, which is the average of the errors. The MAD, which is the average of the absolute errors. Um, the percentage error a mean is the MAPE, mean absolute percent errors, and the tracking signal, which is calculated for each and every period, which is the running sum of forecasting error divided by MAD. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Please like it if it helped you. Share it uh, with your friends. If you feel like, please drop me a line at piyushasha at gmail.com. I'll repeat, piyush, P-I-Y-U-S-H, A-S-H-A-H at gmail.com. I will be very happy to answer your queries and also add any new videos that could help you. Thank you very much.